In the previous lecture, we saw how to obtain the remainder using remainder theorem and in this lecture also we are going to do the same thing. We will follow the remainder theorem to find out the remainder but this time we will use negative remainders. So before solving few examples, we will first understand what do we mean by negative remainders and uh, to understand negative remainders, we will first understand what are positive remainders. So let's take one simple example in which we will find out the positive and negative remainders. Let's say I want to divide 8 by 3 and you can easily tell me the remainder of this division. It is equal to 2. The remainder is 2 because we multiplied 3 by an integer which gives us the result which is closest and smaller than 8. 6 is closest and smaller than 8 and you can see we required 8 for perfect division but now we have 6 so 8 minus 6 is equal to 2. So we are short by 2 and it is the remainder of this division and we call this remainder positive remainder 2 is the positive remainder now we will try to obtain the negative remainder for the same division we want to divide 8 by 3 and to obtain the negative remainder we will try to get the number which is closest and greater than 8 8 is the number which we are dividing by 3 and we want to multiply 3 by an integer which gives us the number which is closest to 8 but larger. Here the number was closest to 8 but smaller. So we will multiply 3 by 3 and it will give us 9. 9 is closest to 8 but greater. We required it but now we have 9 so 8 minus 9 will give us minus 1. This is the remainder of the division but this remainder is negative remainder. So we have minus 1 as the remainder. So for the same division 2 is the positive remainder and minus 1 is the negative remainder. Now the question is why we use negative remainders when we already have the positive remainders. We use negative remainders because in some cases the calculation is reduced by its use. For example in this case if you multiply 2 by a number then the result will be definitely larger if you multiply minus 1 by the same number. So calculation is reduced and it will be evident when we solve one example in this presentation. So let's directly move to example number 1 of this lecture. If you remember the last lecture we obtained the remainder when 17 multiplied by 21 was divided by 12 and we used the positive remainders 17 was first divided by 12 17 was first divided by 12 and the positive remainder in this case is equal to 5 because 12 multiplied by 1 will give us 12 which is smaller than 17 and closest then 21 was divided by 12 21 was divided by 12 and the positive remainder in this case is equal to 9 so these are the two positive remainders obtained and 17 is multiplied by 21 so we will multiply 5 and 9 5 multiplied by 9 and then divided by 12 this is equal to 45 divided by 12 and to obtain the remainder we will multiply 12 by 3 this is equal to 36 and uh, we required 45 so 45 minus 36 is equal to 9 so 9 is the answer and now we will obtain the same answer using the negative remainders to obtain the negative remainder we have to multiply 12 by an integer so that we have the number closest to 17 but larger and the number closest to 21 but larger so let's see how we can solve it using the negative remainders 17 divided by 12 if I multiply 12 by 2 this will give me 24 we required 17 but now we have 24 so 17 minus 24 will give us the remainder equal to minus 7 which is the negative remainder now we will divide 21 by 12 and this time 
also we will multiply 12 by 2 which will give us 24 we require 21 but now we have 24 so 21 minus 24 which is equal to minus 3 so the negative remainder is equal to minus 3 and as 17 and 21 are multiplied together we will multiply minus 7 and minus 3 minus 7 multiplied by minus 3 divided by 12 this is equal to 21 by 12 and in this case the remainder is simply equal to 9 because 12 multiplied by 1 will give us 12 we require 21 but we have 12 so the remainder is 9 you can see the calculation is simple in case of negative remainders we perform the division of 21 by 12 in case of negative remainders but in case of positive remainders we perform the division of 45 by 12 so the calculation is simple in case of negative remainders for this particular question and the next question we are going to see will have a very significant effect on calculation by using the negative remainders in this example 51 multiplied by 52 is divided by 53 and we need to find out the remainder if you follow the remainder theorem using the positive remainders you will have a very long calculation because in that case 51 divided by 53 will give us remainder equal to 51 and 52 divided by 53 will give us remainder equal to 52 51 multiplied by 52 and then divided by 53 will be the same as the given question so you have to perform the long calculation and it will be difficult to obtain the remainder now we will use the negative remainders and you will see the calculation is reduced 51 divided by 53 we will multiply 53 by 1 this will be 53 we needed 51 we have 53 so 51 minus 53 will be equal to minus 2 so the negative remainder is minus 2 and now we will divide 52 52 by 53 and the negative remainder in this case will be minus 1 we will multiply minus 2 and minus 1 and then divide them by 53 this will be equal to 2 divided by 53 and the remainder is simply equal to 2 so this is the answer you can see the numerator in this case it is 51 multiplied by 52 but in this case it is simply minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 so sometimes it is good to use the negative remainders to find out the remainder if you have any question you may ask in the comment section now we will move towards the homework problems i have two homework problems in this presentation in the first homework problem 41 multiplied by 43 is divided by 44 and in the second question 62 is multiplied by 63 and then they are multiplied by 64 and divided by 66 you need to calculate the remainder in the two problems and if you use positive remainders to solve these two problems you will find the calculation is very long so use negative remainders to solve these two problems use negative remainders to solve these two problems and once you have your answer post it in comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one